Hey everyone, it is Sunday and I am heading to the science center. I purchased tickets for the ink card display, so I'm about to head to that and see what I could try to find. Well, I'm kind of lost so. So there's instructions and here is the science center. And we're about to see this exhibit. So the space shuttle is also at the science center. So we're gonna check that out as well. But we're gonna head up to the third floor and do um, also some exploring because I have an entry for the exhibit as well as um, the entire science center. So I'm excited to see the shuttle. Let us go in. This is pretty interesting. It's a little intro video. was a temple, religious temple, obviously not Christian, but I always think history is pretty interesting and important, especially, you know, architectural history. So I think it's just really pretty neat just seeing all the things that, you know, are dug up, um, that these you know, things are existed, have existed and whatnot, so I just think it's pretty neat. So a lot of these artifacts are, you know, again from the temple and it's uh, Buddhism, so just um, interesting perspective of things. A lot of these statues. So this is kind of the talks about the end of the empire. So it looks like people migrated in ways and there really wasn't a single cause of the end of the empire. So it's just you know history shows a lot of people migrate, people move, goes to urban environments and seek better opportunities in life. We have some like building things you can do, some interactive uh, experiences, but I'm kind of, you know, I was, uh, if I knew that it was like a religious temple, probably would not have bought tickets, let's be honest. So this is not my kind of vibe. But it's still interesting, you know, seeing these artifacts and whatnot, the, the pots and whatnot. So, as towards the acres, the engineers, artisans, and kings. So, I'm only pre, you know, maintain a living heritage site, right? but, you know, it's also going to accommodate spells and tours. It's history. hard to balance them. They kind of show, you know, the drinks with these artifacts. Okay, I just finished up that exhibit. And we're gonna try to explore. So I might actually start. We're gonna go to the, actually the first floor and go our way up. So make our way up. I found a little map. So the shuttle is actually you have to go up the second floor, make a left, and then kind of go down the stairs. So we're gonna go to the shuttle as well as explore that area and then there's also the African American Museum which we're going to check out which is in a part of this um, little center. I do want to show this they have a little exhibit on the COVID-19 pandemic and kind of the history of it. I mean it was so recent that I, I remember when we actually had our first case 
in Boston. At the time, you didn't think that it was a, you know, a big deal. And then it became pretty crazy. I would say around March, that's where we hit our peak. So, um, it's, I wonder if it's Boston. Boston was the end of February, so. You know, they have a little bit of New York refers to major case, but I think Washington, the state of Washington had it like the first US case. Kind of shows the destination of how vaccines are done through clinical testing. So it always starts off with clinical trials. Also shows COVID deaths and how much is in LA County. That is pretty cool, I guess. Well, not cool, but informative. So this is a life beginnings exhibit. You know, shows the stages of life essentially. <laughs> it's pretty cool. I think that's always nice to have that here. Very informative, kid friendly. Also showing plant life. Dragons. Isn't that cool? For a Komodo dragon, a female can re reproduce all by herself. Interesting. Huh. So this is showing the stages of life from conception seven weeks, eight to nine weeks. So it's pretty cool. Oh my gosh, look at that. Eight to nine weeks, it's like a little, oh my gosh, so small. So you just expand to the fetus grows, it's amazing. So it goes through a couple of weeks. And then this is the seven. Look at that. It's amazing. Okay, next we're at the ecosystems exhibit. Pretty cool. So there's different zones depending on the ecosystem. So even an LA zone. So we're gonna start here at the Endeavor zone and make our way through and then try to find that space shuttle. So it looks like this is part of the space shuttle, but it's not the actual space shuttle. Once we find that space shuttle, I'll probably start filming again, but I'll do a little clips and whatnot of everything that I see. Enter the space shuttle. There it is. So, so they have a little gift shop too here to purchase things. I might buy something. I mean, this is just amazing. I wish we can see Apollo. Look how big that one is. I believe this is the current space shuttle that's showing. That was a crew on board. You know, it's smaller than an airplane. So, pretty cool though. This is the main engine, I believe, used 
in the space shuttle. So this discusses the parts and the facts. Pretty neat. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about the engine, so <laughs> pretty cool. And then there's lines, or I guess walls, um, informational stuff around the wall. <laughs> So they have sand here. You can just see how the sand moves based off of the wind. Pretty cool. This is the global zone. It's just a big globe that you can turn around. Pretty cool. You can see the temperature differences among the globe. Is it temperature? So you can change it, I guess. There's different features. It's pretty interesting. Next up, rot room. The floor feels very rotty too. And it smells. I don't know if you guys can see that. Though the beetles live anywhere, it can eat dead, dried up animal products. Hence the smell. Ugh, the maggots. I don't see, there's some right there. Ugh. All right, so let's see what happens when strawberries rot. So you think, oh, there we go. Uh -oh. That's rotting strawberries. This is a rotting rabbit. Let's go to pumpkin. Body and pumpkin. And this is a rat rotting. Oh my gosh, do you see how that expands a little bit? That's the that's the dead bloat. The flies. Oh my gosh. That's nasty. Rest in peace to that rabbit. The bugs live in compost, rotting wood, and other dark and damp places. Yucky. Best bugs live in fallen logs, tree stunts in the tropics and southeastern U.S. They're pretty docile. that Giant cockroach live in dark under logs and caves in the tropics of Central and South America. Some of the biggest roaches in the world, they don't bite or sting, but do defend with a bad smell. Look at that big cockroach. Oh my gosh. Can you believe bugs like that exist? So nasty. So nasty. I hate bugs, if you couldn't tell. <sighs> Next up, kelp forest. What is kelp? A seaweed with a secret recipe. I do enjoy seaweed. Definitely, it's Instagram worthy right here. I didn't bring my tripod, unfortunately. Oh my gosh, look at that. I have to take a photo.
we are outside and this is basically the above version of the underground water system we saw before. I think that's pretty cool. And that machine's powering that to mimic the currents. And they have a little touch tank. Use two fingers to touch the animals. Don't pick up or move. I don't know, don't take fingers, wash hands and finish. The purple sea I'm not a fan of touching things, but when when whenever you're gonna touch. So I'm just gonna basically touch it. Pretty cool. These ones are closed unfortunately. But there's starfish in this one right here. So you can use two fingers and just to uh, touch the starfish. So this is the this is star and interesting so pretty cool. And I'm not a big fan of touching things, but it's cool to you know you never touch a starfish. Yeah. So this is the VR simulator, which I got tickets for, and you can choose your adventure. So, just outside now, we have these little outdoor markets here, which is cool. Pupusas. I might get a pupusa on this one. Okay. And then they also have some more pupusas. Pretty cool. I just picked up a pupusa. It was $3. I think it was cheaper than getting the food court stuff. So there's some cabbage with some salsa in it too. Just to have with the pupusa. So I never actually had pupusa before. So part of this garden is you could walk through it and just see all the flowers. I feel bad walking through it though. It's such beautiful grass. California African American Museum. So I'm heading over there now. It's free entry. So I'm excited. <laughs> adventure at the California Science Center and I decided to get Daybird. Daybird does uh, hot fried chicken sandwiches and hopefully it's not the same experience as with Howling Rays 
where it was way too hot. I got medium this time. I guess I can't handle my heat level as I thought. Ooh. This is what they're known for, the sandwich coming out of the, the bread. I'm so excited. Just to actually recap for the price, $16 for the sandwich. Then I got a side of fries, which was $4. And then a side of the daybird sauce, which was a dollar extra. So let's take a bite. Mm, not too hot at all. Much of a difference compared to the Helen Ray's. Very crispy sandwich. These are thighs as the sandwich meat, which is gray. This is really good. Then I'm just gonna quickly try the fries. So these how the fries look. It's really hard to mess up fries. Fries are also really good. So, just so you can get out of the light, but this is how the Daybird chicken looks. 10 out of 10, I definitely recommend going to Daybird for the chicken sandwich. It is really good. That concludes my day three in LA. I ended up going back home and just relaxing. It was just a great day just to go to the Science Center and then just chill in my Airbnb. So stay tuned. Next video is the final day and my weigh-in and follow-up back at home.